Hello. Today, we're all aboard the Dog Hike Bus. Um, so for those of you that don't know, Games Workshop has shown us one of the new models that we assume is coming from the new Arbite's Kill Team in Soul Shackle, and it's this adorable dog. He's he's amazing. Let's let's dive right in. Let's let's dive right in and look at at this. So Ar Arbite's all but confirmed. Um, so look, I, I know there are some skeptics in the audience. Okay, I got in trouble last time. I said Arbites were confirmed, right? But they are now seriously looking confirmed, right? So we know we're getting. Kill Team stuff at the Las Vegas Open, right? Um, the only Kill Team thing that there could almost possibly be would be Soul Shackle. Because they don't really... I know we just have those cards, but can you imagine you get there early in the morning for your Las Vegas Open preview and it's like, here are some cards. No, it's going to be Soul Shackle. We strongly suspect, and I was already certain, but we strongly suspect our bites are coming in Soul Shackle. Arbites have a track record of having cyborg dogs. This cyborg dog is labelled K9, which is what US police call their dog units because it's a, a great pun. Because K9 and then and then K9, which is the, the proper word for a doggo. And he's on a Galadark base, man. Like, Arbites are coming for kill team. They just are. I, I really love this one. He's amazing. And he's been on every slide in this presentation. He's he's just great. Like, I really, I think it's an amazing miniature. Um, I, I like that they decided to make it a biological dog with an extensive mechanical kind of grafting. So there have been three previous iterations of this, uh, the idea of the, the Cyber Mastiff. Mm, technically four. Mm, I forgot the Inquisitor Cyber Mastiff. I didn't get a... Bad, bad table of impulse. But the there was the Inquisitor Cyber Mastiff that came first. It was a metal dog, right? And then down here, you've got the Fanatic Press. Remember Fanatic? The, the, it was when Necromunda and all the specialist games were run by another studio called Fanatic. And it, he's a little metal. And he's like a little 40k scale version of effectively what the, the, the Inquisitor scale uh, Cyber Mastiff was. Now, this weird looking guy... Hardly anybody knows about this model, and people think I've just made it up. This was a limited edition resin uh, dog handler and dog that they did for the Arbites for Forge World. It was like a Forge World show only model. Didn't tie in with any particular range and looked quite different actually from anything Arbites before or since. I do have one somewhere. Uh, now, this dog does have, he looks mostly like a dog. He does have, uh, if, if, you, if you get a proper look at the model, some like cyborg bits like on his head and I think on his other side of his body there's some little cyborg bits uh, and this is from ne the current version of Necromunda from the Palatine Enforcers who are like off-brand Arbites right but clearly inspired by this one down here this is a Cyber Mastiff but in the uh, the black and yellow of, of the of the of the um the Palatine Enforcers and I'm really really hyped that they've gone sort of for a, a mix of these ideas because you can see you've got the spine kind of armor, right? The, the the really clear on the on the on the Palantine Enforcers Cyber Mastiff. You can kind of see where that idea came from on the kind of OG Cyber Mastiff. But you've also got that it's a biological dog with bionic grafting like this guy. I think this dog on its other side has a little detail very similar to this, right? Uh, this kind of bit here. And now they've gone for like leg, a full leg amputation, uh, like Skitari. So very reminiscent of what they did with Skitari, where the Skitari had their legs cut off and replaced with metal metal legs. Um, he clearly looks like he's wearing armour. Like he clearly looks like he's a carapace armoured dog. Um, I, I, just, I just think he looks really cool. And he's got a head. Uh, if anything, maybe I'm slightly... I, I don't know about the helmet. I would like... I hope there's an... It would be really funny and cool if there was an unhelmeted version. Uh, that would also be cool. But I like the head, right? Uh, it's very cool. So, what's he going to do in game? Well, we've got two dogs already. We've got the Canon, who is called Aximilian by all right-thinking people. And we've got the Croup Hound. Um, and they basically have the same data sheet. Uh, except the Croot Hound has the 
recruit ability, the the stealthy thing that all the crew have. But effectively, they're the same data sheet. I would be personally quite happy if he was just Axe a million, but with a four up save. He can't pass down a four up save. Um, now, how useful that is depends on whether Arbites get recon. I could see them getting security and recon. I could also kind of see them getting security and seek and destroy. If they don't have recon, then having a dog like the uh, Aximillion and the Crew Hound is kind of pointless because a big thing that dog allows you to do is quite easily score pickup type um, secondaries, of which I think the only one in the game is. Whoops, a daisy. Spoilers. Uh, of which the only one in the game is, I think, in the recon deck. So, mileage may vary. I think it would be great if you had some additional special rules around, like, holding, like, chasing after, and then maybe, like, catching and making immobilized, like, enemy mobile. I don't know how it would work, but uh, the Cyber Mastiff in the, in, in the fluff, his thing is to bolt after the fleeing uh, kind of criminals and then to kind of stop them so the Arb Arbites can catch up with, with, with the criminals. Um, so maybe some kind of mechanic like that. Maybe you have a ploy. Or even a secondary, which involves getting people with your dog. I don't know. I don't know. Let's have a wider discussion now about these kind of operatives. Must we catch them all? Uh, Kill Team now has quite a stable of lesser operatives, which I have taken to calling Pokemon for obvious reasons. I have arranged a picture of each of them over on the right-hand side here, which I will now narrate because I know at least one person who uses these videos as a, a podcast. So we've got the new assumed Adeptus Arbites dog. We've got the, uh, the, the Star Striders Canid, Aximilian. We've got Tau Drones. We've got the Commando's uh, Squig, Dynamite Squig. And also the Commando Grot. I'm sorry, he's been demoted to Pokemon. We've got the Poxwalkers, little gribbly, nerdly guys. The ones that are actually part of the team. I'm not counting the ones that are... War gear because they're oh, equipment, I should say, because they're different again, right? We've got the pair of Necron drones that I can't remember the different names for. We've got the Crook Hounds, we've got the Navy Breacher Geist Skull, and we've got the Navy Breacher CAT. Now, I define a Pokemon as a functionally non combatant utility piece. Now, I know some of these have like the various dog type things have an okay melee attack, like I get it, but ultimately none of these things want to be in combat. You, they have um, utility, they bring utility. Now I think these work really, really well. I really enjoy them in the context of um, where you're asked to choose between one of these operatives and a basic trooper model. I think that asks a really interesting question and it kind of can telegraph to your opponent a little bit what you're planning to do with your team like if you've taken um one of these things instead of a trooper like you've lost the obvious offensive power and survivability that that trooper would have over the four turns uh, and so you've made you know it signals to your opponent that you've made a conscious choice and therefore he's got to watch out that you you know you're clearly going to try and do something with that piece because you've chosen to include it in your in your army list now the the three teams that break that rule are um, the the Star Striders, the Galapox Infected, and the Necron Heretic Circle, because they have to take their Pokemon. Now, I kind of feel like we can give the, the two Kill Team 18 teams, the, the Star Striders and the Galapox, uh, a little bit of a pass, because they are like a range of miniatures that was designed, as far as we know, by John Blanche, with very little regard to anything, that have had, I think, quite a good rule set made for them, but they're very, very, they are what they are, and they're not very expandable. Like, if someone told me that I could swap out Aximillium for another Star Strider, but I had to buy an entire box of Star Striders, and have two guys with the exact same pose, like, that would be lame. Right. The Necrons, potentially, I could see in a future, if they need a future buff, I could see them letting you swap out the, the little drones for additional immortals. I think that would be interesting. I think it's an interesting question. And it's funny when you talk to people about this. Like, there's no consensus in the community. I know people who swear double down, for example, oh, you never take either of the Pokemon in a Navy team. You always take two um, 
you always take two extra troopers and i know people who swear by both of them uh i know people that really love the bomb squig and people that would never take the bomb squig there's all kinds of different schools of thought on how many drones you should and shouldn't take uh, and, and I, I don't know that much about croup but i imagine that they i mean croup hounds are really interesting because if you want to you can take two croup hounds you get two in the box and so it's it's how hard you want to go on croup hounds is a really interesting uh, interesting question to me um but it's worth saying that we have seen more and more of these um, as time goes on. So if we look at it, in Season 1, we got the Commandos and the Tau. And they were basically the only teams with Pokemon. And they had a few... Like, Commandos have two different ones. And the Tau have, I think, three different kinds of drones that they can take in various combinations. So they had a fair few, but they were the only two teams, right? Whereas now, in, I mean, and then I'm not sure whether you count Star Striders and Galapox. Are they the last two teams of Season 1? Are they the first two teams of Season 2? Um, or are they something else? Are they like a mid-season thing? But even taking them out of the, out of the consideration, if we just look at the teams that we've had properly during this season... Um, you know, you had the first box there with the Navy versus the crew. Well, they have two pets each, right? Two two Pokemons each, okay? You've got the second box there where it's the, 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 the uh, Kazakin don't have any uh, Pokemon, but they're versus the Hyrotech Circle who have two Pokemon. And then now in the third box, we know that the Arbites are getting a Pokemon. We don't... How would you feel if Dark Eldar got a Chimera? Like, it could happen. That could be their upgrade sprue. Like, uh, mostly, you just use the Dark... Because Dark Hill, I don't need that much. There's definitely space on their upgrade sprue. Uh, potentially, like, they don't need that many extra operatives because the Dark Eldar squad box of 40k has most of the things that you need. What if most of their upgrade sprue is a Chimera? The game arguably needs a Plastic Chimera. You know, uh, I think 40k Dark Eldar players would be like, cool, we've got a Plastic Chimera. How would we feel as kill teamers if Dark Eldar also got a Plastic Chimera? Let me know in the comments. While you're down there, like, subscribe, do all those things. That would be really helpful. The last thing I wanted to say is that there's a obviously a, a dog subclass appearing. So I mentioned this on the last slide. You've got the Star Striders Canid, uh, Aximilian, who is a dog. Uh, and he has basically the same data sheet as the Fruit Hound. And it looks very, very likely that the Cyber Mastiff is going to be like similar. I, I think probably he's going to have the same abilities. I, I, I would imagine like he's a, a dog. Like we definitely have this thing of we'll see when his rules get spoiled. But it seems like we have this dog type Pokemon thing appearing as well. How do we feel about that? Does it feel like they're just recycling the same operatives? Uh, I don't know. I quite like the idea because, to me, it, I, I actually like these repeated kind of archetypes. I like that, oh, well, we kind of know what a sniper does. We kind of know what a what, what, what a comms does. We kind of know what a medic does. And now we can add, oh, we kind of know what a dog does. I quite like that because it makes the universe feel, to me, quite cohesive and interesting. And the idea that these different uh, military formations or races or whatever else... But they still kind of fight in similar ways or similar enough to be abstracted to the same rules. I like that. Other people might say it was lazy, uh, and I, I can see the argument. Like, um, so it remains to be seen, but it's an interesting thought. Again, let me know in the comments if you have feelings on this, whether you think that the, the Cyber Mastiff, which I noticed actually, I haven't put the name in. He's not being called a Cyber Mastiff. He's got some other slightly fruitier name now uh, for, for Kill Team, but... He'll always be a Cyber Mastiff. Like Aximilian will always be Aximilian. He'll always be a Cyber Mastiff in my, in my heart. Um, right, final thoughts. Do you enjoy the dog... From a, 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 as an object, of art, an object of art, yeah? Do you enjoy the dog as much as I enjoy the dog? I, I think this is a really cool miniature. Important question. How soon is this release? Now, I always feel bad when I speculate this because I'm, I'm going to speculate it anyway. Big Kill Team channels, whose bread and butter is Kill Team, who get pre-release products from Games Workshop, haven't, when I'm recording this anyway, they haven't thrown a video up about the dog. Now, that just might be because, like, you know, 
Oh, dog. Oh, I, I, I don't know whether I'm trying to impersonate Crystal Glass and failing. Um, but they might just be like, oh, I don't like dogs. No, that's lame. I'm not excited. I'm not going to make a, a thumbnail with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dogs. Many of which are jaunty angles. I'm just hyped for dogs. So maybe it's that. They can't see the content. They can't see that they talk for 20 minutes on, on the topic of one miniature. But it could be that the release is super soon and they got the box copy. And that's just pushed them over the edge into like, well, I, I, mm, I could report. Like, there's no rule against it. I could report this. But it would literally be like, this article is on Warcom. And how do you, how do you speculate? How do you speculate about what the dog might do when you know what the dog will do? Like that's 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 some top tier compartmentalization going on. So if they have their boxes, that probably means that we would. I would guess. I know nothing. Two weeks potentially is usually the figure that's banded about. Two weeks before the pre-order window, uh, and then you've got a third week. Before the release, we could be, we could be three weeks. Does that make? Let's have a look. We could be three weeks out. Let's think. Uh, yeah, we are on Monday now, obviously. So that would put it eleventh of February. Eleventh of February. Is it the eleventh of February? Does that make sense to anybody? Eleventh of February. Like I'm just, I'm just very. Now that was unprofessional. I'm just very curious. Um, when is, bear with me, right, I'm looking things up in the middle of the, the old video, do, 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 if I think about, yeah, you see, the 11th of February will be interesting, because that's the date, that's the date of Kill Team Critical Strike at Warhammer World, isn't it, Saturday the 11th of February, uh, so, oh, you know what? Last time, last time that was pre-ordered, last time there was definitely a Warhammer World event. There was definitely a Warhammer World event on pre-order day. I have a strong and visceral memory. I have a strong and visceral memory of sitting in Bogwin's bar, pre-ordering a Kill Team box at a Kill Team event from Element Games on my phone. Um... Because I didn't want to pay an extra twenty five percent. Little bug element games there. Uh, so all this, all all these these things added together. If I was to speculate, I would say, oh, pre orders, pre orders, and man reads book video on the eleventh. Yeah, release on the eighteenth. But it could be a week earlier. It could no, it couldn't. Let me think here. So it'll be a week till the twenty eighth. It'll be a week till the fourth. It could be. It could be pre orders and rules leaks on the fourth. Release on the eleventh. I think release on the eighteenth is more likely. Which I know seems really soon, but um, you've got to imagine they want to clear the decks. If we know that we we know we know nothing. Um, but if we know that. Warhammer 40,000 10th edition is being uh, that the sort of hype train for that is being launched at fest. Uh, we know there's certain things they need to get squared away before then, like the rest of the whole of the, the Gathering Storm um, narrative piece, not the Gathering Storm, what I've just gone back in time, the Arcs of Omen, including the secret book five that's going to be about Lionel Johnson, right? So, and we've currently only got a book, book, book one in the wild, so we've got four of those books to get through. Uh, we've got Kill Team to get through. We've got some kind of a Warcry hype box to get through. You know, so I think things are going to come out pretty quick. Pretty quick. Your thoughts. Your your thoughts. Those are my thoughts. What are yours? Um, and what are your thoughts about Pokemon operatives in general? Do you like them? Do you loathe them? Uh, what do you think about, about the, the, the dog type Pokemon? Are we going to get... Is this gonna is this gonna be a dog like the other two dogs we've seen, or is it gonna do something totally totally different? I don't know. And I also want to say just the continued support everyone on this channel is really good. The people who always comment, right? 
the people who always hit the like button, I don't know who you are, but there are people who always do it every single time. Someone's probably hit the like button already without even watching the video to find out if they like it. That's brilliant. The people who are subscribed, every subscriber, you mean the world to me. And of course, the, the people that join the Discord, the people that use the Element Games uh, Aleph link, right? And of course, the, the, the channel members as well. It really, really, really does mean the world to me. So, um, I don't say enough thank you. Thank you for your continued support. And on that note, uh, I'm just going to say I am really hyped for the Arbites. And hopefully we'll get a full a full reveal on Friday. And we can start to, as we always do, speculate based on what the models look like. Uh, what they will do in, in game. Cheerio. Bye-bye.